it's been um, coming for a while in terms of the introspection um, that I've had on my own personal growth and journey as a leader. But after 2020, I did have a very, well, in 2020 I had COVID and then a lot of last year was spent in the hospital mm -hmm. trying to recover from the effects of long COVID, um, you know, getting a lot of surgeries done, having a device put in my heart. Um, and that forced me to also kind of stop and uh, think about what I felt was important and what I was doing. And it terrified me that I was in a position and sort of standing still because I could feel myself atrophying because you don't always do what you think you can do or to the best of your, I suppose, potential. And I just didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't also want to be um, disingenuous and insincere and sit in a cushy, comfortable job just because it was easy to do that instead of challenging myself and also trying to reimagine how I could give back to the country in other ways. First of all, I think that the political football of just incompetence that's always been thrown around. I think some of the parties genuinely don't have people that know what they're doing, particularly our governing party. Uh, I'm tired of politicians who are not prepared to do the hard work but want a lot of the perks that come with it. Um, and with that is really, I mean, I've been in, in committees where there's been me and maybe a few other people who have been awake. Those people are not taking their jobs seriously and nobody holds them to account because of the way the political party system is sort of set up. Um, I also think that there's no real vision that's been put forward to the country and uh, some kind of way of thinking about how to make the society equitable and just for everyone. We just move from crisis to crisis in this country and it's deeply psychologically scarring, I think, for all of us to be living in such a period of instability all the time. People that want to have families, people that want to you know, just live themselves. Um, and there seems to be no real solutions. Instead, we just see our political parties constantly bickering, even with the formation of coalitions. Um, you, you can't get a sense that these are people that are adults in the room and that they are the best of what we have in society. And when I look around me uh, in the country, there's more than enough people that are capable of South Africa. Um, and I think those people should be given the platforms and should be given the access to kind of take up these positions, particularly of my generation um, and maybe younger. Um, otherwise, what we're going to have is just us waiting and having our lives delayed at the whim of people who are not going to leave because nobody just gives up power willingly, um, but who are afraid to change and to try and reimagine what politics and just the political discourse in this country can look like. So I'm a little bit angry, I think I'm fueled by some rage in that sense. Um, and I hope that my righteous anger will help to, you know, align me more with my purpose as I go onto the ground. I think I want to create an organization that's probably an NPO. Um, that can have the space to do a lot of things. One of the things I love doing is speaking to kids in school and that's inappropriate, I think, uh, when you're in a political party or you're doing it from that lens, for example. Um, so I just, I don't want the, the conformity of mm -hmm. having to work within those confines. I want to be able to do a lot of work across the spectrum with various different people and not force them to have to sign membership and to say that they belong to every line and rule of the constitution of something. Um, but like I say, as soon as I've taken a step back, because it's also hard to think sometimes when you're within a system, um, that's what I'm going to do. But I feel passionate about it and I think that more South Africans than not would like to see something different. I think it's hard to speculate because I think all political parties are in a weird space at the moment. Um, obviously the DA has gone backwards in two elections now, which is not great because then it starts to become a trend. Um, but I think if the party is prepared to innovate maybe in some of the ways that it does things, the way that it reaches out to voters, the way that its leadership behaves, the way that the culture of the organisation is, um, maybe there's some arrest in it. But I think it's hard to turn back um, a trend that is going backwards in another direction. There should never have been a case where 
the ANC should still be so dominant as it was, considering how formidable the DA was as an opposition party. There should never have been an action SA that could have taken so many votes away, or even a Freedom Front, um, you know, being able to uh, almost have a resurgence. Um, and those are questions for the leadership of the day. And perhaps I would have tried to look and do things differently had I won, but that's their responsibility. And for the sake of the country, I hope that them and that the political parties um, can grow up a bit and you know, really work harder for people and do what's needed.